the desires you have after you believe do not determine whether you believe. Because somebody might say, you know, well, if I believe, why do I still have such a strong desire to sin? Why do I still have such a strong desire to do the things I did before I believed on Jesus Christ? Such a strong desire to not follow God, to not do the things that God wants. Um, how, could I be, how could I believe, how could I be saved if those desires are there? And let me tell you why that's a foolish reason to determine whether or not you believe based on the desires you have, uh, the di desires really that you're focusing on. Um, not that, uh, we, all, we all have those desires. But you know, you know some people, I don't know if you've ever had somebody say this to you, but they'll say, you know, when I believed on Jesus Christ, when I got saved, I just lost all desire to sin. Has anyone ever said that to you? And you ever think like how foolish that is? Uh, are they so blinded? Are they so blinded by their own sin and their own pride that they think, well, once I got saved, I, I, don't, I don't have a desire to sin anymore. You know what? I, I, I only try and follow Jesus. I only try and do what's right. Let me show you this verse in James. I don't know if you've ever thought, thought of this verse this way. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So what brings forth sin? It's the lust. And where does the lust come? Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So if somebody, says, if somebody says to you, well, you know, when I believed on Jesus Christ, I just lost all desire to sin. My question would be, well, then why do you still sin? Because you're not, unless you believe you're sinless, right? Which surely, because, you know, the Bible says if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So we all have sin. But if we just lost all desire to sin when we got saved, why do we still sin? Well, we still sin because the desire to sin is still there. So it's, it, it's silly for somebody to say, well, when I got saved, I just lost all desire to sin. And it's silly for somebody to believe when they get saved, they're going to lose all desire to sin because we still sin, therefore the desire is still there. Now, why is the desire still there? Well, let's just look at a couple of verses. <sighs> Galatians 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye, not, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. So as a believer, why do we still have these same desires that we have? It's because we still have the flesh. See, when we get saved, our spirit is born again. We have the first fruits of the Spirit. When Jesus comes again, our body is going to be born again. In the sense, we're going to get a new body. But right now, in this present moment, we are in still the same sinful body that has, is capable of the works of the flesh. And because we are still in this sinful body, we have this spirit that wants to do the right thing and we have this flesh that wants to do the wrong thing. So if it's, if it's possible for a saved believer in Jesus Christ to have the right desire and have the wrong desire, isn't it silly then to determine whether or not you have faith based on whether or not you have the right desire, because you can have the wrong desire. 
So then you'll have bouts of thinking, well, do I believe? Because you've got these wrong desires. And then you've got bouts where you, uh, you, you have the right desires and you think, well, now I believe. So you're not going to be stable in your salvation because you're basing it on the wrong thing. Now, both those desires are there. You know, why then does somebody have such a strong desire to do the wrong thing? Well, it's because they're not walking in the Spirit. See, we decide whether or not to walk in the Spirit or in the flesh because those desires are always there. The desire to do right is always there. It's just whether or not you're focusing on it, whether or not you're choosing to follow that desire as opposed to follow the desire of the flesh. And the more you follow the desire of the flesh, the stronger it's going to get. It's sort of like a drug, isn't it? The more you do it, the more it awakens that feeling. So we need to mortify the deeds of the flesh. We need to mortify that by walking in the Spirit. Now, if, like we talked about with joy, if walking in the Spirit was automatic, once you got saved, why would Paul then need to say, this I say then, walk in the Spirit? Why would he need to command it if it was automatic? Because it's not automatic. It's something we need to do daily. We need to crucify ourselves daily. We need to uh, take up our cross daily and follow Jesus Christ because it's not automatic. So it's not just if I'm saved, I will live right and I'll do what's right. And if I'm not doing the right thing, then I'm not really saved. I'm not really believing. No, because it's possible for a uh, believer to have both those desires. And this is going to be the last passage I turn to, but Paul describes this inner battle that he has in Romans 7. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. What's carnal? I am fleshly, right? This is the flesh and the spirit, sold under sin. He's saying, I am, Paul, for that which I do, I allow not. So he's saying, I do the things and I wouldn't even allow them to be done. For what I would, that do I not. The things I want to do, I don't do it. But what I hate, that do I. So how, does it, how do we make sense of all these statements? Because the spirit hates it, but the flesh is doing it. And Paul is both of them. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. So there are tongue twisters in the Bible. This is one of them. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So we see these two laws here, the law of God. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So we see there as believers, we have the spirit of the, and the flesh, we have the law of God, and we have the law of sin, and we have them both. So this is why trying to determine the existence of your faith on the basis of your desires is, is foolish. So we'll cover um, a bit more next week. So let's just recap. So it's not your circumstances, or how you led up, how, what led you up to believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not how you feel, whether before or after, because you can have good or bad feelings as a believer, and it's not your desires either, because you can have good or bad feelings. Um, so that's not how you know whether you believe and whether or not you know you have salvation.